A reading from Matthew chapter 27, verses 15 through 26. Hear the word of God. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Victor Hugo's epic masterpiece, Les Miserables, is set in France during a time of revolution. We've been using a resource by the Reverend Matt Rawl called The Grace of Les Miserables as a sermon focus during our Lenten season. And it's been amazing to me how the themes we've been discussing have still fit, even in the midst of this coronavirus nightmare. That's even true today, as we're coming to terms with this unbelievable truth that we're not gonna be able to be physically together in our sanctuary for Easter. No Palm Sunday parade, no Easter egg hunt, although Jennifer's come up with an idea for a virtual Easter egg hunt. No Monday, Thursday foot washing, although there may be some that appreciate not doing that. No gathering around the table, remembering the Last Supper. No departing the sanctuary in darkness and emptiness and silence as part of the Good Friday observance. No Good Friday night hike in Cades Cove. No sunrise service on the Foothills Parkway. No seeing our sanctuary filled with people wearing their Easter Sunday best. So much feels wrong with the world. The Les Miserables theme we could say for today is revolution. Talk about a revolution. Revolutions emerge from times when folks get passionate about things that don't make sense or feel right with the world. The root of the revolution in Les Miserables is poverty and the desperation it launches for those affected by its power. In Victor Hugo's masterpiece, which is 1,400 pages long, which maybe you could even have time to tackle and read during these days, Paris is a powder keg ready to ignite in flames. Those who feel trapped by the injustices of the oppression have found allies in some of the sons and daughters of the aristocratic elite. 
Their forces are joined and they found a cause. They're ready to overthrow, overturn, destroy, upend the way things are. But as is the case with a lot of revolutionary movements, things don't usually turn out quite as planned. The passion is exciting. The ideals are inspiring. A camaraderie is found until the bullets start flying and the violence erupts. In Les Miserables, the momentum comes to a screeching halt when a young child is killed. The barricades that the revolutionary forces have erected begin to fall. One night, the revolutionary friends are sitting around the table, sharing a meal, trading stories. And the next morning, everyone who had seemed so united and committed is either dead or fleeing. It sounds a little like the Last Supper and also connects with our own experience right now, how quickly our world has fallen apart. How suddenly so many things have been upended. How dramatic the shift from hope to despair. But we are still the church. Maybe we're not all together in the sanctuary, but we are still finding ways to make God's presence known and to worship. We're still finding ways to focus on the power of God. And maybe this is the time above all times when we need a revolution. But we don't need a revolution of our own making and design. As we've been discovering, the best laid plans of we human beings are not holding up very well at this time. All of the things, all of the people we have put our trust in, all the things we've relied on for our security and our comfort, they're not standing up to the test of this challenge. What we need today is a Jesus revolution. And Holy Week gives us a very vivid picture of what that means. It begins today with Palm Sunday as Jesus is setting his face toward all of the powers and principalities that are massing against him. And nothing is stopping him. Jesus keeps on marching, but he does it in a very different and unexpected way. He does it in humility, riding on the back of a donkey. He does it in peace, even though he knows that these crowds who are laying their palm branches at his feet and shouting their hosannas are soon going to be shouting for him to be crucified. He continues on this path of love. In the scripture passage for today, we see the people around Jesus making a choice. Whom do they want to let loose in the world? Whom do they want to set free? Will they pick Barabbas, a notorious sinner, or will they pick Jesus? Matthew even illustrates how thin that line can be between sin and righteousness by giving them both the same designation. Both men have the same first name, Jesus, which means the one who saves. Both even have the same second name in a way because the name Barabbas means son of the father and Jesus is also the son of the Holy Father. When given the choice, it is their sin that they choose to let loose in the world. They choose to put love to death. But Jesus continues on with his march. We see in Barabbas a representation of all of us as all of us too are blinded and trapped by the power of our own sinfulness. When Jesus dies, Barabbas goes free. Father, forgive them, Jesus says, for they do not know what they are doing. When Jesus dies, we all go free. 
This coronavirus force is exerting itself in extraordinary ways with pressure on all of us. It's an invasion and we too are finding things toppling. And as people of, cho of faith, we too have choices we are making today. Who gets the power in our lives? Who gets our hearts? Will we choose fear? Will we choose isolation and separation? Will we choose despair? They're very tempting forces, believe me. I know, we all know in a way probably in ways we've never known before. Sam Wells in his reflection on power and passion says, don't forget that Christianity is not so much about being clean as being cleansed. Don't be so tough on yourself that you cannot see the glory of forgiveness and the gift God is giving you in this new relationship in Jesus Christ. We are in the midst of a Jesus revolution if we are able to choose Jesus. Matt Raw continues that this Jesus revolution is not about escaping the world, but redefining it. It's not about doing away with our enemy, but about loving our enemy. The crowd chose Barabbas because they didn't have a holy imagination to believe that Christ could truly change their reality. Do we really believe in the power of Jesus Christ to bring restoration to our world? During this holy week, we're invited to walk with Jesus into the heart of it all, into the heart of this transformation that upends a world that seems lost with the most unexpected and amazing victory. Maybe we can't be together in the sanctuary when we're making this walk, but I hope you'll give your time and your focus to the journey of this holy week. We'll be trying to help by continuing to offer worship opportunities for Monday, Thursday, for Good Friday, and for Easter Sunday. As people of faith, we believe that Jesus brings the possibility of real change, real hope, real transformation, real salvation. And we know because we know the end of the story, because we know what Easter is bringing. We know that this Jesus revolution cannot be upended, even by this virus. We know that Jesus has the power and the love to conquer all. We know that Jesus will not allow anything to separate us from God's great love and mercy. Let us pray. Holy Jesus, Come into our lives and into our hearts and help us choose you. Help us keep our focus on the power you have to transform us, to bring us hope, even in the midst of the deepest despair. We're especially remembering that during this holy week. Help us to walk with you and experience your walk with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.